And so here we go, part three of my little series on the Holy Spirit. There is so much more we could talk about on the Holy Spirit, apart from what I'm sharing in these three parts. And so please don't think this is comprehensive, not at all. Uh, so the next um, letter we're looking at is I. If you've missed the previous ones, you can easily find them uh, on my YouTube um, playlists number 10 and number 11. So this is number 12, uh, but part three. And the I we're going for is inspiring. Uh, when we were thinking last week, we I, I gave a quote from Billy Graham uh, when we were thinking about how God reveals things. And uh, Billy Graham used uh, um, the word illuminating, um, which could have been my I, but inspiring in a way, illuminating is like revealing, being, things being revealed to us, getting revelation. But inspiring is different. Um, now, our story, Bible story today we've thought about is Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And uh, you can read about that in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. There's a lot going on in this story. You know, God is alive and well. And firstly, an angel speaks to Philip and tells him to get down to the desert road. And so Philip gets down there, totally obedient to God's angel. And once he's down there, um, it says in verse 29, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk beside the carriage. What I find interesting here, so and, and that's just what Philip did. He heard God's spirit speak to him. He was kind of inspired to go and walk up beside the carriage. And uh, he wasn't told what would happen at the carriage or what to say at the carriage. He was just given the immediate next action. You know, too often we don't do the immediate instruction because we want to know more as to how it's going to work out. Um, but this is what faith is about, stepping out in faith. Uh, and so anyway, Philip went and uh, and then as he got nearer the carriage, he was able to interact with the Ethiopian eunuch. And, and you know, then the Ethiopian eunuch invited him up to help him understand the scripture he was reading. And uh, and here a revelation went, happened, you know, by God's spirit, the Ethiopian's eyes and heart was totally open to the message of salvation, the message um, of God's love for him. And he just thought, hey, there's water. I just want to be baptized. And and so Philip uh, did that. He baptized him. And then the Holy Spirit took him away, like being transported by the Holy Spirit as well. We haven't, that is not our tea, being, being transported. Uh, anyway, I've not known that. That's not that's not a common thing that the Holy Spirit does, but He did it here because God can do anything. He's omnipotent; He can do anything. Um, there's a lovely verse here in Galatians chapter five, verse sixteen: "Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives." And uh, it goes on to say, you know, whilst you when you let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, you won't be fulfilling. Um, what your old nature, the evil nature, wants to do with your life. Um, and so it's really l inviting God to lead us and guide us in our lives, to inspire us of what to do from day to day. Uh, then we won't be so vulnerable to the, the temptations of all the wicked things we could do with our lives. You know, around the space there are many satellites. In fact, right now, there's just over 2,000 satellites orbiting the Earth. And uh, and that gives us um, GPSs and sat-navs and all sorts of gadgets, you know, mobile phones with GPS on. And, um, and you know, the GPS is such a help, whether it's your sat-nav or just giving you a location. Um, and GPS stands for Global Positioning... Uh, you were going to, were you thinking I was going to say satellites? No, it's not. A global positioning system. And, but it, it, it's all about satellites. And, and so I find that really helpful. I remember getting my first sat nav and it was just so helpful as I drove uh, through a busy town at five o'clock, a rush hour, and it was just so liberating and so helpful. I know they're not perfect, but really helpful. Well, I like to use GPS as an acronym for 
God's prompting spirit. God's prompting spirit. And in a way it has similarities to Satnav and um, it guides us. God wants to guide us and inspire us as to day-to-day -day life, real life. In John 14, Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, encourager, counsellor and advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. And so the Holy Spirit can really help us in so many ways. The Holy Spirit, as it says in Luke 12, can teach us at the time what you should say. There are so many situations in life that we find ourselves in an unexpected situation where we need to come up with something, um, something, I need to come up with a good answer or a good explanation, um, and we just don't know what to say. We can do a quick help prayer. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit, give me the words. In Matthew 10, uh, here the, the disciples, um, Jesus is preparing the disciples for when they're in um, persecution. Uh, so Jesus says, when you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. And so great encouragement there that God will inspire us as to what to say will guide our lives by his spirit you know the guidance on philip with the ethiopian eunuch was fantastic and then god's revelation that he gave the ethiopian eunuch was also so encouraging but you know it's not that easy sometimes to hear god's spirit because there's so much noise around us the world we live in is a noisy place and um, we need to be careful that we don't let the noise of this world keep us from hearing the voice of God. There's a great story about the prophet Elijah. Uh, you can read about this in the first book of First Kings 18 and 19. You know, Elijah had a massive victory and uh, had clearly heard God and, and did the most incredible demonstration of God's power on Mount Carmel. Um, but then really upset Jezebel, the, 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 the queen, and she put a life threat. She threatened his life and said, you're going to be dead before sunsets or something, something pretty horrible. Anyway, Elijah lost his nerve and lost his faith that God was going to look after him and ran and just ran for his life. Anyway, God caught up with him, so to speak, and, and God said, go out and stand before me on the mountain. The Lord told him, and as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a thunderstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire there was a sound of a gentle whisper. Other versions say there was a still small voice. When Elijah heard it, he just knew it was the presence of God. And so he wrapped his face in his scarf and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And, you know, we, more often than not, uh, the way God speaks to me is that gentle whisper, is a, is a still, small voice. And um, someone has said this, someone says life should be living among the gentle whispers of God. And so as we go through life, we just be listening out for that gentle whisper of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives. Jesus, when he, through the Gospels, we can read about the I am's of Jesus. You know, he's the resurrection, the life, the gate, the good shepherd uh, and others. We may look at that sometime. I think if the Holy Spirit had some I am's, it would be I am the gentle whisper inside you. You know, the Holy Spirit just wants to come up close and whisper into our ears to inspire us, uh, sometimes to reveal things to us. Uh, but he wants to speak and communicate to us. Uh, Psalm 46, verse 10, we're encouraged to be still and know that God is God. You know, this whole being still, getting away from the noise of the world, getting away from the the ringtones uh, and alerts on our phone. Uh, and so 
we need to get away from the distractions and still ourselves so that we can hear the gentle whisper of God. Uh, having a Bible handy is often a great help. Um, you know, just ask God to guide you to somewhere in the Bible because God can speak to us uh, today um, through things he's written, uh, being inspired many years ago. And so that's a huge help. And so there we have our, our penultimate point, the fact that the Holy Spirit can speak to us, inspire us and, and really meet with us in that personal way, often through that still small voice putting a little light on inside us to do something. And my final T, as I said, isn't being transported. It is being transformed. It does a transforming work in our lives. As we welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives, it does a transforming work. You know, Pentecost all happened in Acts chapter 2. And at the last few verses of Acts chapter 2, look at the way the Holy Spirit has transformed all the believers. It says this. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over all of them and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Their lives were transformed. The coming of the Holy Spirit into their lives just transformed their lives. Jesus said, you shall know people by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. And so Jesus is saying, you shall know people through what trans how they're transformed. And when we receive Jesus as our Saviour and receive the indwelling Holy Spirit into our lives, it's going to have an effect on our lives. It is. And you know what? But we can limit that effect by just not welcoming the Holy Spirit day by day into our lives. The effect of the Holy Spirit, we often think about as the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of God's Spirit. Um, faithfulness, love, joy, peace, goodness, patience, kindness, self-control and gentleness. Wow, they are nine beautiful characteristics. Characteristics that so clearly defined Jesus. And the good news is that even though naturally those characteristics are not us naturally, by God's Spirit we can bear fruit of those. We can produce those things, those beautiful attributes in our lives. And for that, we must keep being filled with the Holy Spirit. We thought about this last week, this importance of continually being filled because we can't contain the Holy Spirit or we consume it or we leak it. We need a refilling of the Holy Spirit each day. And as we do, we will find these beautiful nine characteristics, these fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. We will find each of those are available to us. We need to remember, we need to remember um, the message we've thought about earlier that, as it says in Romans 12 verse 2, we need to have our minds renewed and be transformed um, and it's this process of this transforming work by the renewing of our minds as we feed on uh, the truth of God's word. And so there's a process here that we bear fruit. If you plant uh, something that bears fruit, do you see fruit immediately? Of course not. It needs watering, it needs sunshine, and, and it needs nurture. And so our fruit will grow. Our fruit will grow if we feed it the right things, if we feed on the Holy Spirit and if we just pray that I invite God to transform our lives. So there are our various points and attributes of the Holy Spirit, many blessings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so much God, uh, it is a, the third person of the Godhead and the Holy Spirit is available for us to bless us and help us uh, to reveal things to us, to inspire us, to transform us and to empower us 
do far more than we can ask or think. We're going to sing uh, a new song. Well, it's not new to me, but it might be new to you. It's called Alive in You. And uh, there's some beautiful words here. Now, it's a new song. Um, I don't know how you cope with new songs. I'd just like to encourage you to give this a try. Uh, and and um, yeah, I think the words are really uh, wonderful. And uh, yeah, uh, it's by Kim Walker Smith, Jesus Culture. And uh, it's Alive in You. And then after that, we'll have our prayers. <laughs> 